So we've got our scouts set up. Our science ship's about to start investigating. We've got all the leaders that we want, spent everything. So now it's time to actually get started. So I am going to be going max speed for most of this and pausing whenever there's anything we need to do. So these, that's a pretty good world, 18 size. No, pause it because we need to put someone on this and minerals aren't going to be as important for us. Ah, we haven't finished that yet, Never mind. We finished this one. We're going to put one of the fast learners here. We'd like to get this 5% bonus now. OK, good. We've got minerals. We're not actually going to build that first mining station until we get the uh, the, first, the prosperity opener. Okay, and we won't need the minerals quite as much as most. Okay. Right. Okay, good. Got a planet. Size 18 is good. It's, it's positioned right at the edge of our border, our warp. It's positioned right at the edge of wormhole range. So it will be a good placement for the actual wormhole station. Um, okay. Now, if we looked at it, we were going to finish two and a half years in. Now we're going to finish a year and eight months in to open prosperity. And basically we're immediately going to have enough minerals even with our reduced plus five minerals to build three mining stations. Whereas before that amount of minerals without our leader or that bonus, Basically, it's almost three times as many as we would normally get to build at this point. Um, back to the leader. If you don't start with one, you probably want to try to get... Like, this is a high-priority uh, leader ability that it's worth going through and supporting, supporting one for the 10-year election. Okay, there's that prosperity. Make sure we go, only got one planet that we can expand to. Ooh, this is good though. Okay, so we're opening prosperity. I'm gonna go in here. Um, to start with two to start with, we want to get all of these, all of the mineral spots. We have an orbital research mandate. Let's see what these are. Looks like space amoebas. That's annoying. They probably won't actually kill anything. Okay, good, good. Actually, so I actually like this ability on your starting, on one of your starting surveyors, because you 
are really limited by how much you can survey. Okay. Our next our next thing to plan ahead for is the fact that we're about to get Transstellar Corporations, which unlocks the private colony ship, which is a colony ship that can be bought for half the price and using only only energy credits. To do to prepare for that we need to ramp up our energy use. And the best way of doing that is to clear the tile blocker here. And build a power station on this. We're actually not going to be working this mining station much at all. Oh, that's, that is something. Ah, parrots. In any case, we found our first, first moon men. These guys are evangelizing zealots. There, another another race that I created. So now I really want to expand to here. I have 12 months, which may be enough time, but I want to box these guys in. If not to here, then to here. I don't want them taking any potential planets from me at all. <coughs> if it was a little bit later, that would have been better, because I, then I could have afforded to build a... to immediately build a frontier outpost. But for now, I need to wait for colony ships. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, 10%. I'll do that. Okay, here's a good spot. I noticed this four. That's worth building a mining station on quickly. So the next thing he does will be getting more, me more energy. I need to get to plus eight to comfortably build, like have one colony ship going at a time and plus 16 to be able to comfortably do two at a time, which is my goal in the early game. So. We're helped by the fact that power plants are simply better than mining networks. They cost the same but power plants give you an extra credit and they don't cost any maintenance. So this gives you a net one resource. This one gives you a net three and that's far better. Speaking of why we want that, we're grabbing this so that we can actually get this started. And I'm going to sacrifice some food to get to get more faster. We want to maximize our energy because we need to get a colony ship building quickly. And then we need plus eight left over to not have a deficit. Now, okay, so those things are still there. Maybe they'll leave. It's not a bad world. I'm going to survey that planet. That doesn't work. We'll survey this one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, good. Those guys usually leave relatively quickly. 
That's a good planet. I want it. This one might be better, though. Just for purposes of building a wall. But to be honest, I just want both. So, by the time I finish this, I should be at plus eight from this. By the time I finish that, I want this. <clears throat> okay. So, don't forget that you can basically treat food the same way you usually do minerals. You don't need to have 200 all the time, you just need to never have zero. Your base growth is the majority of your growth. Okay, good. Now this tech's one of the best ones, just because early influence is so valuable. Um, these are built quite good. Let me think. Border range is going to help me more immediately, even though it's twice as expensive. We do want deflectors. We want to get those on our Corvettes relatively early. So looking at... Yeah, research that. And let's look, take a look at these guys. The evangelizing, they're not very friendly. I think we should declare them rivals. I mean, they already hate us. A thousand for being fanatic purifiers, an extra hundred from being rivals is not going to hurt that much. They're superior, as we expect, from an advanced start. And we need to catch up. But they're probably not going to attack us for the first... Probably not going to attack us for the next, like, three or four years. Just because of the strength of our spaceport. They don't want their... They don't want to lose their fleet to it. Which is understandable. be able to so looking at I like doing the spirals because you can cross the gaps and basically infest multiple spirals at once might be able to cross right here but it may be too far this one seems more likely I need to plan for that and I also need to start building corvettes I'm going to be doing that while this. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to be doing that, investing in Corvettes while using my minerals, while I'm waiting for the energy to actually build more private colony ships. The fail risk is over 10%. I prefer just waiting and coming back once my people are higher. Um, looking at these, this one's much more habitable and cuts them off more. I got the influence for it. This one costs less influence, is less habitable. I think I'm going to go with this one. Right here is good. Potential adjacency bonuses. Okay. So now I can't do solar panel networks yet. 
but that is something I want. I researched that a minute ago, so I lost a little bit of, I lost a little bit of energy that I could have gotten. However, this is somewhat promising. So this whole having the closest enemy be this close is dangerous. There's some periods here, like right now, where they could probably wreck us. We want to get our fleet strength up a little bit so that because that's factored into their calculations. Okay, so from that event, we just ended up getting 245 energy. That is enough. It's enough to where when this gets two thirds of the way done, we can start. Or if we can get some more energy. We can't get any here really so I think we're probably going to wait until this is two-thirds done and then start and the production the production time will mean that we're never taking like double double income penalties so looking at this there's another good one here and here So currently, I'm not looking to expand out of my initial circle. I don't want to let anyone know that I'm here. Except for, well, my first targets. So this has two large planets. That means it will make a good shipyard. I can keep it in my core with all of my uh, with my starports that have all the bonuses to production cost and production speed, and it only take up one core slot. So I will want to get this one set up relatively quickly. This one, just if I can grab it before they take it in their border. And then I'm, I guess I'm expanding south and possibly jumping here and here. If there's someone right here, I'm kind of screwed. I might have to become a protectorate. And wait into the mid game. Okay, so I've got enough that oh yeah, I feel comfortable building my private colony ship after this one, but I won't go into a deficit. So after this, the first, you can either go for discovery for a fast planetary survey corpse, but we don't have open borders with anyone. In fact, everyone hates us. So that's really more useful late game. It basically equates to if we conquer someone, we get a big boost of research to go with our boost of unity and food that we get from just purging them normally. So one thing that I've found discourages the enemy is building from attacking us is building more spaceports. They seem 
Uh, first of all, they're very helpful for defending. So we're going to try to build a spaceport as soon as we can after this finishes. If, if they attack before it can get a spaceport up, then it's much easier for them to get war score. And that makes everything more difficult for us. So we had a plan for the defensive war starting immediately. Okay, so we got some pirates. I'd like to build one more of these. Yeah, grab that. That. I don't know why they're both there. Okay. So we might be able to jump them and trap them in. Okay, we've got the two really good ones. So I... Let's start hemming this, this macaw utopia. And, okay, that's good. This one always loves us, as long as we're fanatical purifiers. It's our xenophobic faction. Okay, they're attacking here. I'm going to attack, and the reinforcement should arrive in time to help. Okay. So this one costs 99. We can afford that. We don't want to end up there or down here. There. The ideal spot would be here, but I want those minerals. That's a poor start. I don't know if that's the best place, but there's no great place. Okay, so five Corvettes should be able to kill this relatively easily. We get the Fanatic Purifier bonus, bonus, and they do not. Okay, so where are you? Survey so that, deal with that. Okay, good, good job. Oh, this guy got maniacal, that's good. We're going to we're going to need some maniacal people later on when we try to become telepathic. Telepathic uh, gas people. Hmm. No. I don't like more than ten percent. Okay, once we set, once we get this guy going. Oh, we're ready for another one. So we've gotten to the point where we can afford to have two colony ships going at once. This means this accelerates our expansion greatly. And it's something that you can rarely actually manage to do without private colony ships at least not by eight years into the game. So I'm gonna spend most of my minerals for a while building starports with whatever's left over going to keeping this one constructor ship going and building some Corvettes. Like the point of this stage of the game is literally to colonize every single planet that I possibly can and take up space so that no one else can colonize those colonize the planets that I want to colonize in the future. I want to have twice as many planets as them so so that I can have as big of a fleet as them. Okay. 
So I got this set up, and like I did before, whenever every time you get a wormhole station up, you need to send out a military ship to scout each of the, the locations. Currently, there's only two. And I will want to build this here. Okay. We've got two researches done. Spaceport level two. That one's good. So my priorities, this is high priority. Like this leads to robots and robots are very useful. Destroyers on the other hand are even better. You want to get up the chain of ship types as fast as possible. And you don't really care about actually researching ship techs. They're not super efficient and you can get them for free from defeating or even losing to your neighbors. So we're going to go for starport techs as much as possible. That's useful. In fact, it means we can pump out another colony ship immediately. Once you are done, We need to try to leapfrog them. Oh. Someone owns that. So that means there's someone else over here that we haven't met. So we're not going that way after all. We will place our neck. We want to place our wormhole stations to give maximum, like maximum distance covered with everyone. So this one's definitely the best one. So we're going to set up here and see if we can expand more, because we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six more planets, and we're going to want more than that before our first war. And I feel relatively safe, and we're falling way behind on our mining stations. So it's time to build a second construction ship. Usually they won't attack. Usually the enemies, yep, here's this, these guys that were stopping us from building a wormhole station. They also hate us. Luckily, they they have a rival. We're not going to declare a rivalry on these guys, because it might make these two make a defensive pact. And rivalries are more valuable when you're there's someone you're bordering anyway. Colony ship arrived. This one's good. This one's actually good enough that I want it more than the spaceport level. Starport world. Um, we're just going to throw this here. We'll be able to get four eventually. Okay, this is good. Oh, they're spiritualists. How nice. And they live in sprawling slums. So we found some moon men. Our first. The first that we can actually properly cleanse. These are strange, buzzy, bug people. And we're going to go say hello to them. To do that, we're going to build three assault armies. 
it always takes exactly three to not have any losses, or to guarantee not having losses. And yeah, once we've done that, we'll go say hi to those people. Okay, we're gonna start our second construction ship making, like building stuff. And it looks like we're actually not going to get the mandate done. Those stations are simply so expensive. I don't like spending 90 for one of them. So this guy's not going to finish. We're going to switch support to this guy. I can't afford building a bunch of research stations. Nice. We're saving up for a starport now. Okay, so we're finding people that are over here. That's good. These guys have non-aggression rivalries with this guy. I'm going to declare rivals with them. We don't care if they form a defensive pact, and we get a lot of influence from them. Okay. We paused it, and we're going to do the scouting again. And we're about to finish our second world. So I'm checking if there's been any deviation here. So this guy is not, we don't want egalitarians. Not with what we're doing. This one only has one egalitarian to a larger number of pops. So the chance of getting it on our private colony ship is lower. So we're gonna build it here and build not build a corvette yet we still need to get our still need to get something else going on okay that one's awesome that pays for itself in under 10 turns What are these? Void clouds. All right, so we're not gonna be able to colonize that until we can take those on. Size 25 though. And we need to get this going quickly. I notice, so we got the ruler. Was it the one we wanted? Let's see. Yes, this one has a minor mandate. We'll finish that in a matter of like six months. Uh, but they didn't have the front. Uh, that's the wrong one. Oh well, we got the boost from it.
So, we're doing that. Let's get as much. Yeah. Of course, they're still far stronger than us. Ah, uh, we lost a scientist. Very nice. Yeah, they. I'm sure they will become productive members of our society once we have them vaporized and then recreate, reformed into members of our society. So, first things first, we definitely want to be processing them. Triumph. I approve of that name. And we, we definitely need one of our people there, because once they're finished processing, of course, there will be no one there. So, no. There we go. So we can build this for free. So we'll do that. Good, good. All right, there's a couple of good OK tiles in here. But the important thing is that it's another world we have. And we're going to want to start, we currently start with 100% unrest. We want to reduce that. So we're going to need to start producing defense armies immediately. And we're also going to use this world as sort of a honey pot. We're going to leave it with no starport. Anyone, any AI that can see it will go for it immediately. And then they will try to launch an invasion and fail because we have something like plus, we've got plus 33, plus a third army damage from this plus 10% army damage from this, and plus 20% more from this, you know, because we can't be killed with normal matter. So, you know, I think that is a pretty common tip for playing on difficulties, but if you build towards it, it becomes even more powerful. Ooh, and our pirate, our colony ships are cheaper now. And we already have one. So let's start work on our shipyard world. We can set it here, 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 here. And then we're going to do right here. That gives the most bonuses. Yeah. 
Okay, new colony. So, when we get our solar panel networks, that's a perk of having starports on every planet. And notice we're not really building corvettes. So corvettes don't seem to provide as efficient of uh, discouragement to the AI attacking you as just building more starports because they factor in both your naval capacity and apparently the the strength of your your actual defenses and starports have a lot of strength so until we either get significantly more mineral income or finish building starports everywhere the corvette's amount's not going to go up much So if you just start building Corvettes right now, eventually your neighbors are going to get stronger than you anyway. They're going to attack you. So we need to discourage them from attacking us while continuing to grow in strength. And to do that, we are going to use our high energy to rapidly expand. So. Here's the first time I've actually bothered looking at these because I rarely want to build things. I do like building power plants. They're very efficient. You build, spend 30 minerals and it produces two. So if there's a good power location, I'll build those. Otherwise, I mostly just let these grow and pop and we will in population and we will deal with the rest later. Oh, we have a situation. This is serious. Moon man coming in from under the ground. Like, that's unacceptable. But before we do the preemptive strike, we should probably take our soldiers there. And we're going to actually have, oh, got a nice general for them. Let us deal with these moon men. As, as is known, carbon-based life such as this is a threat to all higher life. Whether it comes from underground or wherever. Oh, yeah. So we're going to finish up our, this colony ship is going to finish. Um, okay. Finish up our shipyard. We've still got one, two, three more that we know of that we're going to need to survey. Also want to survey near these and start searching for our next victims. I mean, yeah. So the question is, can we jump here? I suspect we can, but let's continue down this path for a little bit. It's a little more efficient until we find someone down here. Hopefully they spawned a cluster over here and we're expanding away from our cluster, which would be here. <laughs> if so, we can get very strong. more defense armies and we need to start getting a spaceport here mm -hmm. okay this one has some okay things to set up in that one should go there first our food is good so we're gonna be gaining 40% extra. Basically, 
these guys are fueling us having 40% extra pop growth, which is pretty great. That's so understanding of them. That's unfortunate. Okay. So we just finished, this guy just finished scouting. Let's send him out again. Research that one easily. That we definitely want to build. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to actually. Yeah. I forgot to actually launch the preemptive strike. That's unfortunate. I guess I beat them. Okay, so we just got set up with one too many planets, and now we're basically just going to create create sectors immediately. Um, we don't have the minerals to spend on them, and it really doesn't matter that neither will the sector, because we don't really want them building anything. So I'll start up here. with the first thing we set up. Let's actually check the sector. I'd rather them, rather them have a leader and not be able to redevelop. So that's good. And they have no mineral income. So they're basically just holding that for us. <clears throat> Okay, let's get our private colony ship going and start saving up for our next starport. So, yeah, they're getting stronger. We're going to set up a starport here, <clears throat> and then a Corvette assembly yard, and then start pumping out Corvettes. Is always nice to get considering whether to get this but no I think I'm gonna go for mastery of nature this game so let's not waste anything on that let's see 20% may have grabbed us a little bit another world to expand to. So we're leaving this one without. Okay, good. 
but you need to build seven more armies. Good. They're further this way. Looks like we're free to expand down this arm. So all we have to do is keep them from trying to kill us. Okay, so we're going to expand to... It's unfortunate. <clears throat> but we'll make it work. We have plenty of influence. And right here will work. We're going to keep expanding and keep building our spaceports. Although this one that we're actually going to start pumping Corvettes out of is getting close, close to finished. We'll want to expand both of those. Our oh, already building that. So here having two of, I wish these space stations were closer together, but even so, having two of them should help with setting up a trap in this world. Oh, I missed this. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's see, who is this? War was declared. The Hytherian, Hythian Combine and the Interplanetary Technocracy. So my second and third neighbors. These guys are already my rivals. So we'll go ahead and get our extra massive amounts of influence. And we're not done producing these, of course. Okay, that's unfortunate. Luckily, my immediate neighbor's kind of been hemmed in and is very small. And those that are further away are not exactly in the best position. I'm going to send this guy here and see if I can catch a glimpse of what his fleets look like. Okay. 
That was good. This would be nice. That's uh, almost a 50% increase in total damage. But I really want to be pumping out colonies faster than this. Yes, build all those. actually see far enough. Lousy sensors. There we go. Let's get those going. Now, where are we? Need to, well, more expansion is called for. We can go this way or this way. This way grabs a couple more planets, but it's not surveyed. Ooh, I like this. It has a fun, fun event chain. Try to get three. There we go. And we'll continue the relentless expansion. We're going to need to put this in the sector. Anything I need to make? No, let's just be doing okay. So that means there we go. Let's make sure the sector is not running out of minerals or nope, seems to be okay, giving us most of the minerals. Now let's start with this. We'll worry about upgrading these to have deflectors later. Up until we get to our fleet limit, the most efficient ship is... In fact, I'll take a second to talk about that. So right now this ship costs 57 minerals. It costs if we add on deflectors, it'll cost 82, just because of the increase in the utilities. And the shield, so that is ballparking it. It's about a one, a little bit more than a one third increase in the cost, which means a one third increase in the maintenance. On the other hand, if we, and it doesn't actually give a one-third increase in, well, shields over just the standard hull. So the hull points, a one-third increase would be a hundred shields, and we don't get that. So if we can't, if we're not already at our fleet cap and potentially well, probably over it, we're better off just building the basic corvettes. They're going to be stronger. Oh, no, not that one. Here we go.
And I'm going to go ahead and queue up multiple. Okay, let's get our next planet ready. We want this system. And then we're going to want this one. Probably this one. So, and we're definitely going to want to settle this as well. Numbers are easier to work with. Okay, we're good on food, and I don't see any great locations for other things. Okay, we got some rivalries going on. That's good for us. So right now I've slowed down on building the the orbital the solar panel networks just because I don't quite need the the energy yet. And I'm starting to get anxious about this macaw these macaws deciding that they want to attack me. And at this point, I'm starting to... No, I'm not going to buy another scientist yet. Colony ship. I should really start sending these directly to the planet. Oh, it's got high build cost. I don't care. I'm going to use it anyway. Oh, that's a good one. It gives us terraforming tech, which we might actually want to use later. So we're at minus 12. So I feel like we don't want to place a second colony just yet. There we go. Really strange choices there. So we're about to have our first set of purges get purged. And as such, I think we're going to suddenly be losing like 30 food, which is going to put us at negative. So I am going to set our policies and edicts to stockpile some food. A thousand. We should get there relatively quickly. And I'm also going to clear this so that we can set up more start getting more food. So basic hydro farms are pretty good. Okay. We got some colonization going on. 
if that guy finishes and doesn't just migrate somewhere else, then we'll change that. Pretty soon we need to actually start producing more unity. We've fallen behind, but for good reason. We need to make sure we survive for unity to matter. Nice, we're almost done there. Let's continue expanding. So we really need another science ship now that we're expanding so rapidly. Look at all this. Okay. Yet again, we need to expand some more. We're basically working everything here. So we're going to add Vanna, which is here, to this to this sector. Um, let me think how we want to go through there. Here, here, and here. Because we want to leave this and these potential colonizable planets for later. Oh, that's interesting. The Federation Builders. Uh, I can't have any more rivals. But to keep these people happy, I want to have rivals that are bordering me. I guess I'll have to wait. All right, so notice the sort of stuff I've done differently this time. I've barely built anything on my planets because building an actual like hydroponics farm costs as much, almost as much as building two mining stations. And then it just starts taking away energy, which I need. Instead, I put all my resources, my minerals go into to mining stations and defense. And my energy replaces the minerals I would put into expanding. This one, is that six? No. If it's six by itself, I might actually build it there. Why are these guys... Yeah. Get out of my borders, Xenos. That's not okay. Okay, science ship. Good, good. Okay, I'll start saving myself some clicks and placing these directly from here. Yeah, that will work. Still no one over here. This is actually quite a lucky start, all things considered. Triumph for leaving without, but we want three more defense armies to counteract the 30 here. Notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, counters out 90. 12 defense armies is also pretty good, has a pretty good shot of throwing away an assault. Okay. I don't actually want to build these up. We're getting to the point where we actually have enough minerals at 71 per turn to where we can actually keep up 
and catch up with the, the colonization. And now, which is around year 20, is when we're really going to start building up our, our base, our military. Yeah, no, I like it. Oh, this is great. Yep. Always keep expanding. It seems my science ship isn't actually being created. Let's fix that. Was doing it, so we'll just build a new one. So we don't want to go here. Oh, I guess these are something or other. Looks like they are pre-FTL that managed to get into the space age. So now we've been going for a little while. So our colonies, our sector is at three. We might as well start a new one. So we don't want to do Sathana yet because we've got a second planet to get started. So we're going to go, we're going to wait until we finish this and then build it here. I'll throw out a basic power plant as well. So we can afford that now. Computers would let us get AI faster, which will actually help us with our gambit that we will use to become psionic. Well, it'll help us move back from that, reduce our attraction to spiritualism so that we can switch away from it. Now, let me take a look at this. We're 20 years in. Our election will happen in four months. We should check who we're getting, who we're going to get. So I thought this was actually the mining perk, but it is not at all. So I think we lost the guy with the mining perk, which is sad, but truly sad. So let's give the, let's see if we can find the person that's in charge of this. Better edicts, that's good. Not the unity, not so good. And these one, this one I think will work for me. The building cost reduction I plan on using along with comboing with some other reductions. And the influence will fuel that. Now, we're going to want to, this is an awesome system. I'm actually even going to build a research station there.
wait a year here. That's good enough. We want to build there. Again, we want to add. So we don't want to add Sathama yet. We'll add Donkar. Mostly because we need to colonize the second world here. good spot for one as well. Now, we can afford to throw a leader up, recruit a leader for this. This is my favorite leader. Perfect. We're going to combine this leader with the architectural interest plus this edict combined with this will reduce the cost of everything we build by half. Whenever we're ready to actually, in the near future, we'll be ready to actually improve our worlds and that'll make it far more efficient and faster. Lost a leader. Okay, more further this way. They seem to all know each other. And I'm getting referred by all of them. Okay, so we need, we're almost to our fleet cap. And that's something up of momentous, like, that changes our strategy somewhat. So once we actually reach our fleet cap, we're going to shift to using a lot of our minerals to raise either our energy income so that we can afford to go past the fleet cap or upgrading our shipyards so that we can afford to have, so that we have a higher fleet cap. Because we want much more than 41 Corvettes. If we're going to be taking on any of the guys around us, Like, if they attack now, they could probably actually... We couldn't stop them, even if we combined the force of our... The force of... 
our fleet, which is about 1,100 with a starport. They're probably around three to four or 5,000 now. So we've been ramping up our economy, sort of using mostly starports to keep them to keep them away. And now we need to shift gears and actually, continue, while continuing to grow our economy, actually build an army that can defeat them. Because they're going to declare war on us pretty soon, whether we do that or not. So we might as well actually be ready. So, that said, we're still expanding, still f taking all of our excess, still taking all of our colonies, building a starport and maybe a solar panel and throwing them in a, like, throwing them in a sector so we don't have to pay attention to them. But we're about to shift gears into sort of the late mid game. Which we've got a pretty strong economy. We could, we could actually. This can support more. So we don't actually need Triumph anymore. There we go. So solar as so solar panels you see I'm going through building them everywhere they're actually extremely like at this point they're very good because we're starting to raise our ship upkeep costs quite high and that's eating into what we would normally spend colonizing hmm this is interesting it's on caster prime how much do I care about caster prime Here it is. It's kind of a crappy world. I don't care about it, actually. So, let's track that and resume this. We'll see what happens. Likewise, Oh, there's actually two things going on here. There we go. Is this Mining drones, I believe. Construction complete. Okay, so now we're pushing past our limit, but we're about to increase it more. So ways to do that include this. You spin this, this is 200 minerals, opens up another slot, of course, but mostly it gives you two extra fleet limit. 
So this from spaceports is two for level one, and it's goes up to four for level two, and so on. And we're about to get unlock upgrading it to level three, although that's going rather slowly at this point. Likewise, since we're getting to this, we can afford to spend a little, they're still superior, they would still probably beat us, but we can spend a little bit on other things. So, for example, this guy's leaving, so I won't build something for him. But I really want to get my Unity and my tech production at least back on a reasonable track. So I'm going to go down and spend some of my hard-earned minerals building some monuments. Because if we build a monument in every in every city, then we'll actually be getting traditions at a faster rate than someone that just had like a single planet. Good, good. Do some of this. Okay, we got a different habitat. Now it is tropical, which we don't like. But hey, at least all the stuff is gone. All the blockers are gone. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. So that'll help us there. We're going to sort of have to just not... We're not going to be able to rapidly get uh, our research back on track like that. It would cost it would cost too much right now, but it's okay. Research doesn't win wars in Stellaris. Notice how much of this comes from, I guess it doesn't actually tell you how much comes from stations. Okay. So this one, this will be the first, the first one that I'm setting, that I'm actually going to the first planet that I'm actually going to start setting up. So, just, mm, I guess we'll actually, I'm a little ahead of myself, because we actually need to wait for this to finish. There we go. So now we'll get our next one in four months. We just spin our Unity from four to 15. And we're gonna grab this to get even more Unity. So we deprioritize Unity for the early, for after we get private spaceships, because that was what we really needed. 
that now we want to finish the tree is get our get our perks and all of the other advantages. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab fill mostly expansion out. But we'll do a little bit. We're going to grab a couple from prosperity, but we want to fill expansion out like this. And then we'll, based on whether we need to spend influence or save influence, we'll do the other ones. Okay. Now, just continuing on here, we can actually take out some of these menaces. Like we got a per like these are dangerous Xenos that I've actually just been letting sit here. I don't even know what I'm thinking. I don't want to risk. As long as we can kill them without risking many losses, it's worth it. Oh, as I was saying. We got that. That boosted us further doubled our unity output. We'll get the next one in about f a little less than four years, which isn't bad, given just how wide we are. Special project. Oh, damn. That's unfortunate. I'll probably stick with two for now. We need the other leader for a governor. Go with this one. Grab this. It's out of reach. Okay. Well, that's all we'll get for now. Hmm. Okay. So these guys are still strong, stronger than us. But what we're going to, we're getting to the point where. Notice our naval capacity is equivalent. So if we can boost our naval capacity up just maybe 50%, then, and we upgrade our ships to be, to, to all use shields, then we'll be in a pretty good spot to be able to take one of these guys on. And this guy unfortunately has a defensive pact. This guy does not. 
So we could actually leapfrog over the macaws and attack these guys. And they're actually weaker. So that's actually what we're going to do. They are currently in a war. So if we can get strong enough here, which we can build eight more of these. How much does it cost to upgrade? It costs 768 to upgrade it. So we're going to start by And we'll have this in 15 months. It's potentially dangerous, but we do need to start taking, start taking out. Hmm. Well, it's time. This is the point in the game where you start really considering cleansing some of the AI empires. If it was an easier mode, like playing on hard or normal, then you could have began a bit earlier. But we're starting to leverage our yeah we're starting to leverage our aggressively expanding start into something like a reasonable hmm sorry I know, so I need to put Vanessa. Hmm. Guess that one will be here. That's good. So what we're going to do is keep building Corvettes. That's nice. And this is a good one, too. Free happiness. Okay. So we got we have enough modifiers that this is reduced to less than two hundred minerals. I like to do that before I actually spend minerals improving worlds. Otherwise it's just far more efficient to build mining stations. As long as you've got, as long as you claim enough space to have your mining stations. Which notice, this is the empire I claimed. This is all the AI empires. I have about as much space as all of them put together. that is this and then it's time to start upgrading let's get these guys somewhere to upgrade and this will only be two months so soon I will be able to start
We'll get some... Nope, we don't have capacity. Let's grab some propaganda. I need to actually spin this influence. That one's good. So declaring rivalry on a neighbor helps with this. Oh, apparently it didn't work. Okay, none of these are that useful. I'll start getting my facility going. notice credits are starting to become a problem as I build up my Corvette fleet. That will help a little bit. That's not ideal. Let's get... And we actually need to start getting more energy. And okay. So I'm going to upgrade this to level 3, so I can start building some destroyers. And at the same time, let's get started on this. So I'm going to get this set up to the point where I'm about ready to attack my first set of aliens. Oh damn, they started their defensive pact. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to have to shift gears. I can't beat a combination of all of the AI, so I'm going, so for the next game, I'm about to end this, for the next game, I'm going to set up, uh, like I'm going to continue expanding and try to build up strong enough to actually either convince one of these groups to attack me together, then defeat their fleets and counterattack and take a lot of their worlds or I'm just going to keep expanding until I run into someone that might not be in so many defensive packs or well until I find something else so right now my fleet's kind of small my enemy's fleets would probably be able to take me out so uh, in the next in the next session, I'm also going to show how, like, how to set up a proper trap with platforms.
to sort of give your give my fleet a bit of a boost. I'll be starting by putting a putting a station like a platform with a snare here. And so yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I'm going to I think I'll do it again. I'll try to figure get everything set up so that I can communicate a bit more. And I'm going to throw it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And yeah, I'll talk Hope, hope to see you guys again.